Now I would like to invite back Dr Melanie Rewai Couch, who will give a presentation and she's going to use the data screen as well um, to, to talk a little bit about her mahi. Kia ora Melanie, no mai, koutou mai. Aku nui, aku rahi, aku whakatamarahi ki te rangi, tātou i ka pahi nei i raro i te korowai manaki o te atua i ngā takahanga waiwai o ngai tua huriri, o ngai tahu whānui, ngā mihi, ngā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. Tēnā ano tātou, tātou i tatu, mai ki tēnei te rā, e whakamanoa ai i ngā ikinga o tēnā o tēnā o te whānau nei, ara te whānau o te whariwānanga ki waitaha. Ki ngā mātua rautia, o i nei kuku e nuhu nei, e nuhu nei, nei rā te ofa atu ki a koutou katoa. Kuku mai, whānau mai, hāpori mai, iwi whānui mai, tātou i tū kahikatea te uru, āhako ngā piki me ngā hiki o te wā, tēnā tātou katoa. I was a bit nervous when I was asked to speak today. I figured it was because I applied to graduate late that I got asked to speak. But here I am, and as I prepared this talk today, I had a moment of relief when I realised that of my previous three graduations I had absolutely no recollection of any of the people who had spoken, anything that they might have said, and so with that pressure removed I will proceed. <laughs> this picture is of my dad, Dennis MacDonald, age 21. He's on my right. In this picture he's gone bush with Raiti Gardner and Jojo Puhi. It was taken while they were striking from the Alliance Freezing Works in Invercargill. I like it because it captures the basics of Puna Kōrero, a gathering place, having a kōrero about things that matter, and in this instance, the sharing of kai. Because my PhD thesis is dedicated to my father, it is only right that I start with his tūpuna. This will preface my journey, into my journey in education, and I will speak briefly about three principles that I believe are relevant for us today. They are making a difference, understanding success and knowing what you stand for. So maybe this won't be such a short ceremony after all. Right. So, my grandparents are Rina Puhipuhi Mehana, daughter of Mehana, the Paramount Chief of Ngāti Kuya, and George Tilti MacDonald. They had 11 children. My grandfather, George MacDonald, on my left, uh, was the seventh. He and his wife, Kate Mahinarangi, had 16 children. All of but one of them who died in infancy are pictured here. My father Dennis was the youngest and he is pictured bottom right. Point of interest, my father was the Portiki and I am the Portiki of the Portiki, so I think that gives me some intergenerational right to mischievous behaviour. <laughs> uh, through adoption, my mother was an only child and grew up in Roxburgh. My parents married in 1962 and they had four daughters. I am the Portiki of that whānau. Shortly after this photograph was taken, my parents separated, then divorced. This meant that I was raised from the age five by a solo parent, Māori father, dependent on welfare in urban Christchurch. I discovered that harsh conditions in childhood can force creativity. We could not afford to buy new things, so my father figured out ways of fixing old stuff, or bartering, or inventing, so that we would have what we needed to get by. He always thought that I could do almost anything, and so I had to sink or swim. I didn't know any better, so luckily I mostly swam. As a result of my upbringing, I learnt two important lessons. One, that child survival skills are in fact leadership skills in embryo. And two, that the ability to make something out of nothing is useful in later life, particularly if you find yourself working in any sector reliant on government funding, such as running a school. I never felt particularly clever at school. Other students seemed to know what was going on, but I floated in and out and never quite seemed to have the right resources that I needed for that day. Um, there was only one year where things seemed to come together for me. At age 14, I went to a Mormon boarding school in Hamilton, the Church College of New Zealand. The school introduced me to a very different life from that that I'd been accustomed to in Christchurch, living in a dorm. Our daily routine was tightly timetabled. There was a distinct hierarchy dependent on year levels, high expectations, set consequences, and dorm parents tracking my every move. Um, not to mention the dorm prefects who were trying to keep me in line at the same time. 
There were Māori teachers who had high expectations, who encouraged participation in cultural activities. They didn't just teach Māori, they taught science, PE, history, art, and they were in school management. Living at school, I also saw these people in church and community settings. They were parents and they were leaders. At Church College, the overall vision for success was consistent across the school, dorm, whānau and church life, and I believe that that supported my academic achievement. Ah, next point is making a difference. At 17, at 17, I started my first degree here, studying towards a teaching qualification. Here at this university, I met lecturers Alan Scott and Ian Colpin. These good men became mentors to me. As well as being my tutors and being ahead of their time, such as Alan's creation of environmental drama, which he used as an excuse to teach outside, they helped me to understand what a university student was and what was expected in a tertiary setting. No one in my family had ever attended university. In fact, I didn't actually know anyone who had gone to university, and I found it very, very challenging. Completing assignments often took me longer um, than it took my fellow classmates, and I would seek help from anyone who was willing to listen. On top of study, I had to work 20 to 30 hours a week to pay my way through my studies, and was often very tired. It wasn't until the final year of my undergraduate degree that I began to feel as if I might actually be a pretty good school teacher. So when I was thinking this week, sorry, Yannicka said doctors aren't allowed to cry, so I'm going to be pinching myself my leg, hang on, right. <laughs> So when I was thinking about the difference that these men that I've mentioned and the others had made for me, I think of a story I once heard about saving starfish, um, and here it is in a nutshell. A man is walking along a beach, and it is deserted, save for himself, and heaps and heaps of starfish that have been just stranded on the beach. At length he comes upon a child who is stooping and picking up one starfish at a time and throwing them back into the ocean then repeating it with the next starfish and the next. The man asks the child why he's doing this, since it's far too great a task for the boy to make a difference. The boy stoops again, picks up a starfish, throws it into the water, he looks at the man and replies, it made a difference to that one. <coughs> we only have to make the difference for one person and we can change the lives of many. Success. Success isn't just what you achieve, it is what you overcome to achieve it. When I graduated um, from my first degree, I applied for at least a dozen jobs as a teacher and I didn't get any of them. I did some relief work at Lincoln High School and was later appointed to a full-time position teaching um, PE in Te Reo Māori. After a year and a term, I returned here to what was the College of Education as a lecturer in secondary programs, so I figure I couldn't have actually been that bad because I made it back. I won a senior lectureship a few years later and taught here for nine and a half years. Ironically, I then co-lectured with Alan and Ian for most of that time. As a Māori professional, there are many times in your career that you will be faced with hard decisions. You may find yourself, as I have from time to time, having to traverse hidden minefields, caused possibly by organisational or institutional demands on one hand and the expectations of your own whānau and Māori community on the other. No one knows what it is like to be the only Māori person on staff unless you have been that person. And I see some people who know what I'm talking about sitting here today. Even when there are others to work with, the isolation comes in different forms. It can be from well-intentioned colleagues, from institutional racism, politics, or from other Māori staff who we work alongside of but who think differently than us. In these instances, you need to know how to navigate a safe path to be able to pull the two competing factors closer to common ground or on occasion decide who you are most willing to disappoint. Someone once said to me, marina ki te kaupapa, e marina ki te mahi. And this is, is advice to live by. We need to do all that we can to advance those things that we are passionate about, but we shouldn't lose ourselves in the process. Don't burn yourself out on things that may have very little benefit. Live your own life, know where you come from, do not let bad things that have happened to you define you. Find your mentors, your special ones, who have set the standard for who, you want, who and how you want to be. Decide what you stand for and then do it. 
After leaving here, I worked uh, for Ngai Tahu and then as a senior advisor for the National Office of the Ministry of Education. Five years in, on an unremarkable Thursday, the Minister of Education announced that Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Te Whānau Tahi, the kura that my then four and now five children attend, should be merged with the other Kura Kaupapa in Christchurch. So there I was in an excellent position, earning really good money, travelling the country, doing what I loved and supporting Māori achievement, when the very school that my own children attended was threatened for closure for reasons that made no sense at all. The Ministry's position was that I could not participate in any whānau discussion about the mergers while still working for the Ministry. So as our tūpuna Kenny Rogers sung, you've got to know when to hold him, know when to fold him, know when to walk away and know when to run. So four days later I had mutually agreed with my manager to end my contract due to a conflict of interest. This cleared the way for me to act as the facilitator for Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Te Whānau Tahi to successfully oppose the merger. I am grateful now to be the tūmauaki of that kura and for the wonderful kura students, staff and whānau who have accepted me in this leadership role. On one occasion I was telling a friend about how I was struggling with something and I thought the solution at the time was really that I just had to work harder. I'd printed out this quote and it said, a ship is safe in the harbour but that is not what ships are built for. The following day when I arrived at work there was a second quote which she had printed and put on my notice board which read, every ship needs a harbour for when seas are stormy. I took two things from this. Firstly, that on occasion you need to pick your battles and secondly, you need to have a safe space and listen to your friends. If you are lucky enough to have people in your life who inspire you and uplift you, then you need to foster those relationships. Relationships or connections are what ground us and allow us to reflect, to offload and also to receive feedback from those who we love and trust. Never ever underestimate the relief that comes from being in the presence of someone who gets it. Not someone who will just agree with you, although affirmation is good, but someone who can take your thinking to another level and help you to see alternative pathways to achieve the same or a better destination. These people help us to understand how we think better. They help us to know ourselves and the key is to having good relationships. <coughs> On that, I just want to share one of my favourite poems by Derek Walcott. He wrote, The time will come when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome, and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you. All your life, whom you ignored for another who knows you by heart, take down the love letters from your bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit and feast upon your life. Reflection opens our hearts with a whisper to accepting and appreciating who we are and who we want to be. In closing, I do need to thank a few people who have been a strength to me these past four and a half years that have been ridden with earthquakes, child rearing, working and thesis writing. Yaninka and Angus, this image will be familiar to you on my path. I acknowledge that I have had many moments of highly effective avoidance and distraction that you have each tolerated in your own ways and from which you have gently led me back. I assure you that I do now know my research question. Papaki ngā tai o mihi kia kōrua ngā mihi. Jared, my husband of 16 years and father of my five children, your compassion balances my tenacity. And together we are a pretty good team, even if we argue sometimes about who is the captain. <laughs> but I mihi to you and I thank you for all of your love and support, as well as to our children. Ki te kura kaupapa Māori o te whānau tahi, e kuri e mutu aku mihi aroha ki a koutou katoa. Uh, tō taenga tinana mai i tēnei rā, um, tō tautoko mai i te kura hoki ngā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. And so I return to my father. And this is my father's favourite nephew sitting over here by Brigham in the second row, my uncle Geoffrey. My father made an incredible difference in my life taking on the task of raising daughters single-handedly. Even if the conditions weren't ideal, it was no small feat. 
For someone who died with very little, my father lived a very successful life. My father made a difference to others. He knew what success was on his terms. And he wanted success for his daughters. And he knew what he stood for. And I know what he stood for too, because he stood for me. I hope that each of us here create opportunities to make a difference to the lives of others. That you figure out early what it is that you stand for and that you have an incredible adventure creating your own success. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.